Hello, I'd like to tell you about strategic and transitory queuing models. Uh, I think this is a new paradigm in queuing theory and forms a part of my uh, PhD dissertation. So let's start with a small history lesson. Uh, queuing theory has a very long and story uh, history, uh, about 100 years old, uh, and Erlang was the first one to work on such models, and he introduced the so-called MM1 uh, queue. And the idea here is that the inputs to the queue are uh, modeled as exponentially distributed inter-arrival times and exponentially distributed service times. And this model is, has been used extensively to study uh, communication systems, hospitals, and transportation networks, among other things. And it's a very simple model that we understand really well. We know the long-term behavior, the so-called stationary uh, behavior, as well as the short-term or transient uh, behavior. Now let's think about a simple uh, situation. And I want you to think back to the last time that you went to lunch. How did you choose the time to go to lunch? Clearly you had to be hungry, that's uh, required. But you also probably chose a time to go to lunch, uh, such that your waiting time at the lunch counter was minimal. Right? And uh, you know this type of arrival behavior doesn't fit the uh, sort of inter-arrival time model that I described earlier, where the inter-arrival times are exponentially distributed, for example. Also, the uh, lunch counter is probably open for a finite amount of time, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., let's say. And as a consequence of this, it's kind of purely transient in nature or transitory, as I call it. And an implication of this is that the number of customers who come to the lunch counter is finite. So now the question is, how do you model this? Clearly, the classical model doesn't fit this uh, type of system. Well, here's my proposal. I call it the Delta I GI 1 model. And the idea here is very simple. You have a finite population of customers who want to arrive at a particular queuing system. And they choose a time to arrive from a common distribution function f. And then they enter the queue in order of the sampled arrival times. And now the um, inter-arrival times are differences of order statistics, and hence the name delta i. Uh, even though the description of this uh, queuing model is very simple, it, it has very complicated dynamics. Uh, and if you are interested in the queue length process, for instance, that is the number of uh, customers who are waiting in the queue at any point in time, then that has so-called non-Markovian dynamics. And this complicates the analysis quite significantly. And even though people have looked at this in the past from time to time, it turns out that a complete analysis hasn't existed because it's very hard. And we have now provided a complete analysis of this model. And to give you an idea of how difficult uh, the analysis is, let's look at a particular case where the service times are exponentially distributed. And as a result, uh, you can write out a uh, differential equation that determines the distribution of the Q length process. As you can see, this differential equation is very difficult to solve. And you can try to solve it numerically, but uh, you know, analytically, you know, the best thing that you can do is try to get approximations. And in particular, in this work, we develop so-called fluid and diffusion approximations to the uh, Q-length process and how the Q-length varies over time. And we can rigorously show that the Q-length process is well approximated by a so-called Brownian motion process. And uh, you know, to give you an example, uh, suppose that F varied around in, in this fashion, where you went from overload, that is where you have excessive arrivals, to underload, where you have excessive service capacity in the system, to critical load, where the service capacity and the arrival rates are uh, perfectly matched. In this circumstance, the Q length approximation switches between a Brownian motion, a zero process, and a so-called reflected Brownian motion. The implication, of course, being that now you have a very simple Gaussian description of the uh, Q-length uh, distribution that you can use for solving more practical problems, such as uh, control and scheduling and so on. We can also uh, go back to the uh, lunchtime arrival problem. And uh, you know the question was, how did you choose a time to go? Clearly, you were strategic in when you decided to go to lunch. And if everybody around you is strategic, this is a game. And the question is, what is the equilibrium outcome of this game? And making use of the delta I model, we can study the uh, game and uh, tell you what the Nash equilibrium uh, outcome is. It turns out the, uh, at uh, the Nash equilibrium, the uh, largest number of customers uh, join the fastest queue, which makes a lot of sense. And also, when customers arrive, uh, is uniformly spread out over time. And as a consequence, the cost of arrival in, uh, in, a, in a particular arrival interval is uh, constant over that interval. And we can also ask the question of how good is this um, equilibrium outcome compared to a socially optimal outcome. And it turns out that this can be captured in the so-called price of anarchy ratio. And we can show that uh, the equilibrium outcome in terms of a social uh, cost is at the most 50% worse than a socially optimal uh, outcome. 
And it's very hard to reduce the price of anarchy in general. And unless you tax or uh, pay people or incentivize them in some manner, uh, this is not going to change much. We can also extend this analysis to more complicated situations where there are multiple classes of customers who arrive at uh, this queuing system. We can also look at um, uh, queuing networks where there are uh, you know, more complicated network topologies. And in all of these cases, we can uh, identify the equilibrium as well as the price of anarchy. In conclusion, uh, we can make use of the Delta I model and the strategic arrivals model to understand uh, customer behavior and complicated service systems, transportation networks, and also push uh, queuing theory in an interesting direction.